Sunday, the first Sunday of October, which is World Communion Day. I hope that you had your elements ready for communion in just a little bit. But also wanted to let you know that in celebration of communion, World Communion Day, you can see that we have many representations of the world around us. Our music is going to be from several areas or countries. The prelude was from the Caribbean. It was a Calypso-type mel melody. We're going to sing a hymn from the Caribbean area. We're going to sing another hymn from Argentina. We're going to sing, um, and Cameron's going to sing a small, an African-American song. And then our postlude is from Kenya. So we're going to have lots of influence of the world today, as well as a wonderful special music with drumming and other instruments, and it's a South African freedom song. Let's continue now with prayer. Oh, holy, gracious God, thank you, Lord, for this time to be together. I ask that you unite us wherever we are through your spirit. May the words we speak, may the songs we sing, may our thoughts be those that glorify you. And bless us, Lord, with a special message for our lives today. Amen. It's always a special privilege to share the peace of Christ with you. And so I do share the peace of Christ with all of you. The peace of Christ be with you. Let's continue by singing our first hymn, which is 591, which is called Holly, Holly, Hallelujah. And it is a African American or a Caribbean song. And we're going to sing the chorus only twice. continent sits in the southern hemisphere where they all call it the Barbie or Aussie or the the Boy. what is the other the oi uh, <laughs> yeah oi uh, so this is Australian that's a, a uh, Australian hat then we have hats from another land and I don't have the complete set but this is rather old it's uh, it's probably as old as me but uh, you wear it like this Right? And then there's a band that goes around it. What country does that come from? Or a region around the world? The Middle East, right? And that helps to keep the, the heat off of the back of the neck. And so then we have one more, and this is really old. My grandmother brought this from another. My grandmother loved to travel around the world. And this is what you would find in Turkey and Istanbul. And it's a prayer cap. And so it would be just like that, right? Good for the bald spot, too. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've worn this. But that's, we have different hats from around the world that mean different things. And it all identifies us as part of that region. It's a good message for geography, too. It is indeed. Thank, Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> and as usual, we always want you to feel blessed, children, and loved by this church. So blessings upon you. God's blessings upon you.
you now to join me in prayer. Holy, gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, the familiar story of the Good Samaritan, but perhaps this time on World Communion Sunday, you might hear it in a different way. Listen for the word of the Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? And the lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. What does it take to love our neighbors during this pandemic? Well, first I want to let you know what our children have shared with me, because I asked them to send me a letter through email or whatever way. And even our youngest, our little Benny and Jackson, have been doing things for their neighbor. Their mom sent me an email and said, hey, Benny and Jackson have been doing yard work for us, but also for some other people. That's how they've been loving their neighbor. And Henry sent me this email. Dear Pastor Mary, I help my grandma with outdoor stuff. I help her unload her grocery, and I also talk to her neighbor. Our children are loving their neighbors during this pandemic. So what does it take for us to love our neighbors during this pandemic? Well, the story gives us some answers that are simple to express, but perhaps not so simple to enact. First of all, we need to realize that we are all like this lawyer as we attempt to justify ourselves, especially in feeling that we've already done enough. In the story, both the priest and the Levite had reasons based in religious ritual as well as their cultural and personal conviction that justified their lack of action, at least in their own mind. We are good at doing this, finding all kinds of reason not to act or not to do any more than we already are, and such justification helps us feel satisfied that whatever good things we have done life have done in life are good enough. As usual, though, Jesus reminds us that as followers of Jesus, we are called to something different. Remember this about the story. The Samaritan is the surprise of the story. Of all the people that passed by, no one would have expected the Samaritan to help the man. Lots of cultural pre prejudice existed about Samaritans. Jesus, though, surprises and even astonishes the audience with this story. The unexpected becomes a strong, teachable moment and insight into our own discipleship in these days. What does it take to love our neighbors during this pandemic? It takes engaging in the unexpected. 
Another aspect of the story is that the Samaritan took risks and went beyond the immediate need to help the man. Now, I'm not saying that we should risk our health and well-being by possibly exposing ourselves to the virus. However, loving our neighbors in these days does require some risk-taking as we reach out in ways that we've not done before and that may not be comfortable. Loving our neighbors in these days means to try to provide something that will affect them beyond the immediate need. Loving our neighbors in these days also demands a willing spirit. All of us, no matter our condition in life, can find some way to love our neighbors if we have a willing spirit. So how do we love our neighbors during this pandemic? We do something unexpected. We provide something that provides more than the immediate need. We develop and act upon a willing spirit. And it's all summed up in, we follow Jesus. Will you pray with me? Holy gracious God, thank you for this message. And help us, Lord, to love our neighbors in mighty, wonderful, unexpected, surprising ways in these days. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to prepare for communion as Cameron offers us a song from the African-American culture. Remembering all the wonderful things you have done for us. Thank you, gracious God, for this meal. Something that makes us even more hungry and more thirsty for your presence. We ask, Lord, that you bless the elements we have before us, whatever they may be. 
and help us to realize that they are sacred in these moments, representing your body and your blood, all shed for us. Thank you, gracious God. Through Christ we pray. Amen. On that night so long ago after Jesus offered a blessing, he broke bread, and he said, This is my body broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took a cup. And, and I hope you realize that Jesus changed the words to this ritual, this ancient ritual they were doing. Because this time he said, this is a cup of a new covenant poured out in my blood for your salvation. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my coming until I come again. The cup of salvation. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you created all peoples in your image. We thank you for the astonishing variety of cultures and races in this world. Look with compassion upon the whole human family, taking away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts, breaking down walls that separate us, uniting us in bonds of love. Enrich our lives by ever widening circles of friendship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for your children, all your children. Almighty God, we ask that you guide the nations of the world into ways of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness. May greed, war, and lust for power be curbed and all people enter into the community of love. Send your Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Teach us to be compassionate toward the whole human family. Strengthen the will of all those who fight for justice and peace. Lead all nations into the path of peace and give us the peace that the world cannot give. Amen. Church, First Presbyterian Church in Charleston, Illinois. It is a blessing for me to serve here. As this pandemic has continued, perhaps your need for connection has strengthened and deepened. If you are in need of conversation, pastoral care, or spiritual guidance, please 
give me a call at the church office, area code 217-345-2335. My heart is open for you. The hearts of our congregation are open for you. Even though we're not opening our doors yet, we still are church. We still care. We still offer prayer. Come, give me a call if you're in need.